These are the positive elements that make Kenya stand out, and that is why we have earned respect globally. The Constitution sets out our commitment to ecological integrity and environmental protection. We have an obligation to maintain at least 15% national forest cover and to ensure that the environment is respected, protected, and enhanced for the benefit of not just present, but also future generations. As part of the global community, Kenya is a leader in environmental sustainability, biodiversity conservation, and climate action. Since our early days as a republic, we have actively collaborated with international partners to develop frameworks for ecological sustainability and climate change mitigation. This is why we host the global headquarters of the United Nations Environmental Program, UNEP, in Kenya. It is also why we have been at the forefront of developing multilateral and regional policies and strategies to enable our countries combat environmental degradation and manage the effects of climate change. It is therefore essential that we develop capacity, as I have said, including the human resource. The men and women here, and I want to tell you as a father, that the challenge that our Kenya Forest Service has faced in the past is that of laxity, incompetence, and integrity. I want to ask you, in this very important graduation ceremony, in the presence of your parents and families, do not allow your career to be tainted with integrity issues or laxity or incompetence. You have the opportunity to change course for Kenya Forest Service and make Kenya truly the environmental headquarters of the world by serving in a dedicated manner in the responsibility that is bestowed on you today. I wish to emphasize that protecting our environment not only be befits us and not only benefits all of us, but also empowers our generation to discharge its debt to future generations. I join you today to celebrate the passing out of 102 inspector cadets and 465 forest trainees because this is a huge milestone in Kenya's journey towards a greener and more resilient future. I congratulate you on your achievements and the commitment you have shown in the conservation and protection of our nation's natural resources. Your work will contribute to our collective endeavor to build a prosperous nation and leave an inspiring legacy to future generations. Every tree planted and forest preserved symbolizes our vision of a vibrant and ecologically secure Kenya. Your graduation here today is not just a matter of personal achievement or career development, but it is an integral part to our broader national policy to make Kenya clean, green, sustainable, and prosperous. Forest conservation, afforestation, and tree planting campaigns are long-standing Kenyan traditions going back to many decades. In 2023, we launched a national program to restore degraded landscapes and ecosystems strengthen our institutional framework to combat deforestation, and included a national campaign to plant 15 billion trees by 2032, aiming to raise our forest cover to 30%. This is the context in which you must understand the significance of this function and appreciate the role of the graduating officers here 
as well as their colleagues who are already in the Forest Protection Service. They are the guardians of the nation and the Earth's lifeline. Their work enables us to achieve sustainability and prevail against daunting global and local environmental challenges. Forests purify our air, sustain biodiversity, and support livelihoods. It is therefore essential that we develop capacity, including adequate numbers of trained professionals to overcome the threats of deforestation, illegal logging, and climate change, which diminish forests and the Earth's ability to sustain life. And that as we work in consolidating and reorganizing the legal framework for us to tap into this big resource that is available for the transformation of our country, I also want to ensure and to ask those in the forest product space, those in the timber space, that there is now an opportunity for us to grow our timber industry space. We have already taken steps as government to make sure that the use of locally available forest resources takes precedence over imported products. It is the reason why we have made the conscious decision that furniture must be manufactured locally. And imported furniture will not take precedence over locally manufactured furniture. And to make sure that we exploit our resources in a transparent, effective manner, the old method of allocating forest resources to people in a manner that is not transparent has stopped. Going forward, all public resources in the forest will be tendered for in a transparent, clear manner so that we get value for the resources we have in our forests and also develop capacity for industries to use these resources for the benefit of the country, for us to be able to create jobs around these uh, forest products, and for us to manufacture forest products, including furniture, locally in Kenya, using our own human capital, our own developed resources, and making sure that products that otherwise would have been imported are made from forest products that are available here in Kenya. There is therefore an opportunity for business people to work with the Kenya Forest Service for us to create a robust forest products industry that will power the engines of our transformation. The significance of what has happened in the last two years speaks for itself. And I must congratulate the Kenya Forest Service and its leadership for the achievements that are demonstrable. In the last two years, illegal logging and criminal activity around our environmental resources has reduced by 90%. At the same time, because of the reforms that have been carried out, this year, we only supported Kenya Forest Service to the tune of 200 million, 280 million. The rest of the 4.7 billion budget is raised by Kenya Forest Service itself. And I have the undertaking of the minister and the Kenya Forest Service that from next year, Kenya Forest Service will exit from requiring resources from the exchequer and they will run their own affairs using their own internally generated resources. Congratulations to you, and you serve as an example to other agencies that it is possible for agencies to run on internally generated resources. I ask you, as forest officers and managers, as you join the KFS fraternity, believe in yourselves, believe in what you do, and believe in your country. All of us, as the people of Kenya, 
it is time that we believed in this great country God has given us. It is time that we stopped the negativity. It is time that we stopped believing in the fake news and in the propaganda that is hurting our nation. Because looking at the Kenya Forest Service in the last two years, the transformation is phenomenal. What has been achieved in the last two years, reducing illegal logging and forest criminal activity by 90% is something we should be proud of. The fact that Kenya Forest Service now can raise its own resources because of the transformation and because of the reforms that have been undertaken is something we should celebrate. That is not just happening in the Kenya Forest Service. It is happening in the Kenya Wildlife Service. It is happening in the National Youth Service. It is happening in all our other services. These are the positive elements that make Kenya stand out, and that is why we have earned respect globally.